when you're first starting out, the game of chess could be really overwhelming. Therefore, a lot of the beginners are uh, tempted to look for shortcuts kind of trying to ease their way into the game a little bit. While I think this is uh, definitely super relatable, I mean, let's be honest, everybody has uh, tried to scholars checkmate his opponent at some point. Wait, what do you mean you didn't? Oh. Anyways, the issue with that is simply the fact that it is not a long-term solution. So in this video, I'm not going to be giving you the fish, but I will try to teach you how to catch the fish. If that makes any sense and it doesn't sound completely ridiculous. So we're going to be going over two games that I played in the London system rating climb, explaining my thought process and how I adapt against uh, situations that I've uh, never seen before in my life. So without further introduction, let's catch some fish. All right, we're getting a white gain and facing an Iranian opponent. We're gonna be trying out our beloved uh, London system. So to keep it simple, against the queen spawn, we play second move knight f3. Against anything else, we go for the second move bishop f4, just to make it easy to remember. He plays the Chigorin, Chigorin with the two knights. So if he was delaying knight f6, meaning Bishop f5, f6, or let's say weird moves on the side, we would have gone for like a quick c4 approach. But when they play knight f6, um, so it's Chigorin in with two knights, we just go for e3. And now they have two plans, bishop outside the pawn chain, like he plays, or bishop inside the pawn chain. All of them are like um, pretty common. I'm going to start with h3 to see what uh, the bishop wants to do. Now, bishop f3 or bishop h5 are... Two lines for black in case of bishop takes. I think we had some games previously with c3, knight d2, bishop d3, and the trick is whenever they try like uh, e5, not to take de, but to play bishop g5. That would be one of the important details if they take. We have bishop h5, and against the Chigorin with the bishop outside the pawn chain, we have this very nice plan to go for the pin. And usually, uh, black players are either going e6 or a6. Okay, he goes for bishop takes on f3 now, which is uh, definitely not something that I see very often. This is not even mentioned in the course because I don't think it's great, but it's it's definitely interesting. So I think we're just taking against a6, probably just taking uh, the knight. And yeah, we could be starting with castle also, could think about uh, c4. I think we do go for castle and uh, now... You know, like the sort of typical c3, knight d2 approach is reasonable, but I think it makes even more sense to try to like play for the bishop takes on c6 move and double up his pawn. So now that we already committed to bishop b5, it definitely makes way more sense to stick to this c4 approach, even though it was not forced. So he castles. Now, could definitely do something like bishop takes and c5. Bishop takes, queen takes, play that position. However, it might be a little bit better to wait and just play knight c3. You know, just completely completing development and waiting for him to waste the tempo and play a6. After that, we will be taken. So he takes on f4. Now that we have played with uh, c4, the only move to recapture is by... Uh, Taking with a queen, obviously, you don't want to go e takes and then the d4 pawn becomes super weak. Now, question is, does it make sense to throw in something like bishop takes on c6? Then we'll obviously have to calculate bishop takes on e3, so it gets a little messy. For this reason, I think just queen takes, keeping it simple, should be the best. And we may see a move like a6. Okay, we just see 97 now. Since we can no longer go for bishop takes on c6, it's time to bring the bishop back into the game. So we could do that by either c5 bishop d3 or by cd, which will be entering the um, Karlsbad structure. And it's going to be more about the minority attack kind of game. I feel like expanding 
cannot really go wrong with that, but I just want to take sort of limiting his potential of uh, going for e5 break in those structures. So he takes with the knight, I think we just step back with the queen. Have a little bit of an edge with bishop against knight. Just a slightly more pleasant position, a bit easier to play. Nothing crazy yet. But it definitely feels nice. Knight takes on c3 would be definitely something we'd love to see. And okay, it just goes a5. Could play a move such as rook a c1. Rook on the open file, rook fd1. Maybe then considering to expand with e4. He plays with a5, meaning that it's going to be a bit harder for us to um, deliver the minority attack. But okay, now after knight b4 hitting the bishop, I think this is quite nice. Keeping the bishop, preparing a3, kicking the knight, bringing the rook should be useful. And only then maybe next. I could even start with e4, because like a3, knight e5, the knight has some purpose. But I think I... Maybe even better to just play knight e4. Now trying to get to this pretty juicy c5 square that has been weakened after he pushed uh, b5. So he goes f5. Just gonna get the knight onto the juicy square. And hitting e6 among other things. Now a pretty nice maneuver could be a3, bishop a2. Hitting the weak pawn. Definitely expecting queen d6. And then... Maybe e4 already is an accurate move because pawn takes, queen takes is a double attack. The idea is that we're threatening e5 sort of, and then e6 is in trouble. And after pawn takes, queen takes, not only hitting e6, but hitting h7 because the bishop from b1 is doing some, uh, some work. So, okay, I think we're starting to get the initiative a little bit and just need to... Speed up with only one minute left. Definitely should pay some attention. And uh, okay, opponent just missing the fact that we're attacking h7. It's very easy to forget about these kind of strong bishops. And now I think knight e4 is a nice move. On queen aj there was knight g8, so not that clear. And now we just uh, pick up the exchange and should be making it a little bit easier to win. Now, expecting queen f4, knight takes, queen takes, and then maybe rook c3. Idea to play uh, rook f3 is pretty nice. I'm just doing this. Bringing more fuel to the attack. Yeah, knight f5, but now queen a8 is a thing, because no longer knight g defense, and we pick up another rook. So he tried to block rook f3, but was missing the other threat. Now maybe he'll play knight d4. And then I could definitely go rook d4, which is the easiest. Maybe throw in a check on c7 first. See where he goes with the king. Then maybe rook d4, rook f3 could be a way to finish the game, yeah. I very much think that's just finishing the game. Look at this, guys. This is pretty beautiful. Now rook f3 check, king g8, bishop checkmate, and king g8... Uh, now we have like queen c8 uh, kind of checkmate. Queen f7 will force the checkmate as well. So I think just this main thing. Bishop covers h7 and uh, only move now for him queen d8. But simply going to pick up his queen with a checkmate. So yeah, I think that was pretty straightforward. I think the game was uh, quite precise. I think we definitely got him uh, once I have played uh, e4. Yeah, we scored a uh, 95, uh, no brilliant moves, just uh, your average uh, chess gameplay, but um, let's see what computer thinks we could have done better. So, apparently knight c3 is like a little bit of an inaccuracy, but uh, yeah, so here computer has the choice between c5 and cd, thinking that uh, both should be relatively strong i think taking cd was a bit better like i was a little bit afraid that in the future opponent could get some counter play based on e5 so the trick here to gain an advantage would be to play queen h2 and i guess on rook e8 you just have to play f4 to stop him from oh rook e8 is not a move sorry so he has to play c6 first and then after like let's say rook e8 I would imagine the trick is to play f4 and try to squeeze him. So this would have been another way of playing. 
definitely didn't felt uh, that uh, confident play with my queen on h2, so decided to stick with the easier minority attack thing with cd5. In case he would have taken with the pawn, then we just read out the bishop and uh, probably bring the rooks like this and just try to expand. Put pressure on the queen side with a little bit of a better position because we have bishop against knight. And the knight e5, queen f3. Yeah, so regarding the question whether there is a rule of thumb when to play knight c3 instead of knight e2, well, when you play c4, you kind of always want to follow it up with knight c3. So because I choose to go for c4 in this game, knight e2 is not even uh, something that I'm considering. So when whenever you play c4, you want to combine it with knight c3. Keep that in mind. So... Uh, also, when you already, this applies like the other way around, like if you let's say commit to 92, then it's less likely you're going to play with C4, because whenever you do C4, you want to have like the knight going to C3. So whenever you have committed to 92, it's probably better to just stick to C3 plans. Sometimes it could still work to like go for C4, but it's more situational. So um, yeah, then I think we got our rooks nicely placed. We had this very nice bishop B1 move. And rook fd1, kind of nice, not necessarily needed, but now after queen d6, e4 was top line, and yeah, big threat is in case, let's say, he does nothing, like king h8, the point was e5, and now the queen no longer is able to protect e6. Like queen c7 drops the pawn, queen d7 is not a move because the knight covers, and queen d5, I think, can exchange, and then... Um, you cannot do moves such as ED because A3, the knight has to go back and uh, there is simply knight takes. So after A3, the knight is simply getting trapped. And yeah, after E4, he simply had to kind of take. But now this is a deadly double attack and why just uh, wins material. So that was pretty smooth, I think. So pretty... Textbook game against the Trigorin guys. You definitely want to keep this one in mind. So, I think you can go for the uh, next one. All right, getting the white pieces. We're going to try the best opening of all time, the London system. So, against d4, d5, we start with a knight. Against anything else, we like to start with a bishop. And, okay, e6, e3 d5 knight f3 bishop d6 knight bd2 so okay looks like opponents playing the triangle slav which is definitely pretty bad against the london the point of this triangle slav is just that uh, against like let's say the normal lines when white plays c4 black is trying to steal the pawn but it's not really making a lot of sense against the london and in particular against this i mean just bishop d3 putting pressure on the knight and okay, he does this f5 approach but i think knight e5 Super strong move, creating a deadly threat of queen h5, so he needs to watch out. And usually the easiest way is just to play like f3 and get rid of this poor knight from e4. Like he, The only good thing about this position is that he's got uh, a good knight on e4, yeah? That's the only good thing about a stone hole. Once you get rid of that, it's just bad. You're gonna have position full of weaknesses, and this just loses a piece, I thought, to g3. Knight g3, there is bishop g3, important move, and fe coming next. Like, maybe he still will try some kind of g5 trapping my bishop, but I don't think it should be working, because queen's path is opening up. So This should be pretty easy. Just remember this reaction, and I think it should be enough whenever you go against this. Okay, so he's trying to get the queen trapped as well. I'm just going to go queen e2 and long castle, not really care about it too much. Bishop f1 was interesting, but not trapping the queen, so wouldn't play um, strange moves like that. Just gonna finish development and then ready to open up the position. That's how we make uh, progress. Okay, I could also just trade, take on d7, play bishop e5. Exchanging pieces, you know. Which one do I wanna go for here? I mean, I could also play f4. I think e4 is just like such a natural move to open everything up that it would be a pity not to play it. It's of course like not the only move, but definitely 
very tempting. He just casts us. Um, all right, then. Hmm. Maybe E4 was not as strong as I initially felt like, but it should be reasonable. We could take, open up the file, and maybe go knight d7, bishop e5. Could also just play like f4. Not super sure of what I'm just doing right now. Because, I mean, everything should win. But taking and bishop to e5, idea to support it. We've got the extra piece. Pretty decent control over the position. He only has a pawn. So this shouldn't be such a tough conversion. I could think about trying to exchange queens. This may be quite effective now. Could also play knight f3, but I like queen f3 better, just getting rid of his annoying queen. Yeah, same idea. Hunting the queen, he goes passive, and now we got a very nice attacking setup with the queen on the g file and ready to push the h pawn down the board, which should generally be checkmating. He does go c5, I mean, he can just go dc, and then h4. Could also play c3, I think. Maybe even uh, simpler. Case of c4, bishop back, and if he takes. Ah, if he takes, I shouldn't go knight takes because of queen e5, and he's taking advantage of the pin. So I'm just gonna be taking with the uh, with the pawn. Hey, thank you for the raid, Alessia. Appreciate it. Grazie. Welcome everybody. Be great. <laughs> My Italian is not the best, but appreciate the raid. Hope you had a nice stream. So queen b4. Just gonna go like uh, king b1, avoiding any sort of weird checks. Okay, I mean, as long as we start pushing, wait, what's opponent doing? He played that like so confidently. What is going on? Okay, I'm just gonna fall for the trap and take for the knight. So yeah, welcome everybody. We're just uh, doing the... Ah, uh, rating climb because I'm uh, I'm running out of content, so <laughs> uh, just trying to get it to like 2,500 with the London and Cairo can. Not today, but okay. Goal for today is like 2,000. So goes Bishop A4, not really creating any big threats. Definitely considering something like Knight takes on G6, trying to just win on the spot, and then pawn takes, Queen takes, Bishop G7. Rook g1, potentially, rook f7, bishop f5. I mean, shall we do that just for the content? Okay, I'm gonna do it just because we've got the raid. <laughs> just for the raid, we're gonna be playing unnecessarily tricky. Oh, maybe I just ended up tricking myself, but bishop f5 should still be quite strong. Um... Uh, Wait, so how do I start with this? I think bishop f5. I forgot that he's threatening queen d4, but this should be good. A big threat. I think now rook f5 should be best attempt, and then bishop d1. But shouldn't really be a problem. <laughs> Let's see. This is kind of deadly threat usually, typical mating net. So, okay, maybe he could start with bishop d1, but it's just gonna be getting mated after check, and then just rook takes d1, it's got like no checks, and his king is caught onto the edge. Looks like a mate to me. <laughs> We're not banning anybody in this uh, channel, only people that don't play the London system, so you guys can relax. He's threatening bishop e6, so yeah, he finds uh, what I think it was the best move, but still it shouldn't be quite enough. I can throw in this check uh, if I really want to, but this, just uh, okay, I think I'm just liking this because 
or forcing his queen on like more vulnerable position. I mean, his king and then his queen cannot bring uh, herself back into the defense, if that's a way to put it. Okay, so we take and how do we win? Now that's the big question. Well, maybe just by making some moves because there is no time. So, oh, okay, I don't want to play b3. I'll have to play this ugly move. Threatening to just win the bishop, expecting something like bishop g7. Okay, never mind. The opponent just giving me the free win. I'll take that. <laughs> We'll take the free wins. Oh. Can we pre move it all the way? Oh, that would be a stalemate. That would have been a really, really stupid pre move. Okay, he didn't even try it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> didn't even try it. Yeah, how do we do this? <laughs> All right, we're going to be getting the rook checkmate. <laughs> mm, okay, so game review about this. Definitely made uh, made some mistakes because I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to make it interesting with this 9g6. So it was like not necessary. Like 96 third move, but you could like play without it and just win. So, <clears throat> yeah, it, it wasn't like really that interesting in this game. I just got such a superb uh, opening, winning a piece. So what can I say? <laughs> this game was like really unnecessary long.